Hello, and welcome to our segment routing data plane monitoring demonstration. Why are we here? Traffic black holes are the main reason why Cisco developed this new solution. There are significant pain points for network operators. They occur when a router starts dropping traffic against one or more prefixes or MPLS labels. Traffic black holes could be indiscriminate, sometimes impacting traffic on a single LSP, on multiple LSPs, or all the traffic. Black holes could occur from a number of reasons, starting from simple user configuration errors, control plane inconsistencies between neighbors, control plane and data plane inconsistencies, and lastly, dreaded and sometimes difficult to detect hardware problems. SRDPM, or Data Plane Monitoring, was created to detect black holes. With it, every device is now able to validate data forwarding for any prefix seed and for any combination of ingress and egress interfaces. To achieve this, DPM leverages segment routing to enforce the path followed by the test traffic. Let's consider the example where router 2 is a DPM enabled node that generates test traffic to monitor the LSP towards the prefix seed of router 5. The test traffic is transmitted on the interface towards its upstream neighbor, router 1, with an MPLS stack of two labels. The first label is router 1's adjacency seed for the adjacency router 1 to router 2. This will cause the traffic to return back to router 2. The second label corresponds to the prefix seed under test, in this case router 5's. This will cause the test traffic to exercise the desired forwarding path on router 2. Note that using a time to leave value of 2, the test traffic is never sent beyond directly connected downstream neighbors, for example, neighbor number 3 or neighbor number 4. Because router 2 has multiple ECMP paths to router 5, the test is repeated with a varying payload so that the hashing of router 2 now sends the traffic towards router 4. The same process can now be repeated for all prefix seeds in the network. The result is a scalable monitoring solution for LSPs with localized detection process that involves only a subset of the neighbor nodes. The topology for today's demonstration consists of a network of eight Cisco ASR9000 routers running ISIS segment routing. For every node, its loopback and configure prefix seeds is shown in red in the drawing. First, we will have a look at the operation of SRDPM at steady state. In our demonstration, we will use router number 8 as device under test. This node is enabled for proactive DPM operation with just a single CLI configuration line. DPM operation involves a two-step process. In the first phase, it performs the so-called adjacency seed tests where the node verifies the MPLS path for every upstream neighbor and across all ECMPs if applicable. In this example, router 8 performs four such tests, sending test traffic imposed with the adjacency seat segment of each of its neighbors, causing the traffic to loop back to the node. DPM then moves to the second phase, the so-called prefix seed test, where now the node validates the forwarding consistency for each destination prefix across a set of downstream paths. Let's consider the example, router 2 as a destination prefix that needs to be validated. As explained earlier, router 8 will send the test traffic to the upstream neighbor, for example, router number 5 and router number 6, 
and validate a set of downstream paths, for example, router number one or towards router number seven. In the first iteration, the node verifies the path using router number five as an upstream and router number one as a downstream. Observe the label stack imposed to the test traffic. The first label, which will make router five loop back the traffic back to router four, sorry, back to row number eight, and the second label to test the forwarding entry at node eight for the target destination row number two. Now, the prefix seed test continues. In the second iteration, the node verifies the LSP to row number two using again row number five as upstream, but now row number seven as downstream. Note that the change of the downstream path is accomplished by varying the destination IP address used in the LSP ping. This will cause node 8 to hash the test traffic towards router 7 instead. In the third iteration, the node verifies the LSP to router number 2, but now using router number 6 as an upstream and router number 1 as a downstream. Lastly, router number eight verifies the LSP to router number two using router six as upstream and now router seven as downstream. This completes the iterations required to test the LSP to router number two. The DPM process will continue execution of tests for the remaining of the prefixes in the network. Let's now have a look at the router. So here we are on router number eight, which is our DUT. We're going to take a look at the router operational data from the DPM process. In the show command, we can observe the frequency of the proactive DPM operation, in this case, every 15 seconds. We can also see the overall number and results of adjacency seed tests, as well as prefix seed tests. There were four adjacency seed tests with no errors. There were also seven prefix seeds that were validated with no errors as well, and conducted over 24 test iterations. A little bit further down below, we can see the four interfaces where the adjacency tests were conducted. And lastly, we can also see the actual breakdown of the prefix seed tests. For example, if we go back to what we're showing in the slides, if I pick the remote prefix seed of number, number two, we can see that this node, router number eight, conducted four upstream downstream iterations, the same count you saw earlier in the slide, and no errors were encountered. We can see similar results for the remaining prefix seats in the topology. Let's go back to the slides. Well, let's now observe how DPM would detect and react to forwarding inconsistencies present on a given node. Using router two as a remote prefix on the test, we can see on the left, router number eight LFIB entry for the label 16002, and it's two ECMP outgoing paths. Now, Let's assume an error scenario where the out label for one of the egress paths is corrupted. For example, we have the label 16999 onto the path to row number one. In this case, router eight will send test traffic towards router one with the wrong label, 16999. And assuming that that 16999 is not a label present on node number one, node one will send an LSP echo reply with a corresponding error code. Well, let's have a look at this scenario in action. Okay, we are back on router number eight. And first we verify that the LFIB entry for router number two, it's the same as as expected, which we saw a moment ago. 
we're going to clear our logs so we can see the alarms that are going to be raised because of the VPN process. I'm going to use an internal utility on the router to create the inconsistency that we mentioned a moment ago. Let's have a look at the error that we just introduced. Here we are. So the outgoing label for the first uh, IGP path towards interface 0311 is now using a corrupted label value of 16999. Now, if we take a look at the operational data from DPM, we can see that the router, the router has now detected two prefixed errors in the latest uh, iteration. And if we look at the breakdown, the errors are associated with the testing done for the LSP to router number two. Well, let's have a look at the log. And in fact, the errors are here. As I mentioned earlier on the slide, what we now see is errors for every 15 seconds when the test is being run, where the uh, router number eight is receiving a response from router number one saying no Rx label. So as a result of the execution of the VPN process, router number eight can raise an alarm saying, we're sending traffic to router number one. Router number one is telling me that he doesn't have an Rx label. Okay. Let's go back to the slides. This was our first corruption scenario. Let's use another example. Well, let's assume now that instead of having a corruption of the label, what we're going to be corrupting is the outgoing interface for the LFIB entry corresponding to router number two. So instead of sending the traffic to router number one, as expected, we're sending the traffic to router number six instead and hence the corruption that we are producing. In this case, router number eight will send incorrectly the test traffic for router number two towards router six, instead of doing it towards router number one, as we saw previously. And because router number six uses router eight as a next hop towards router number two, a loop can be associated by the corruption. So let's have a look. So we're back on router number eight. First, we're going to verify that our LFIB entry for router number two is back to normal. And indeed it is. I, I no longer have the corruption for the label 16999 that I used to have. I'm going to clear my log. Now I'm going to come back to the router and I'm going to use my utility to create the corruption. Corruption is in place. Let's have a look. If we take a look at the LFIB entry, now we see that the first IGP path is going down on interface 10 gigi 0312 instead of interface 10 gigi 0311. Okay, so the corruption is, is running. If we take a look at the DPM operational data, we can see that we are detecting two prefix six errors as part of the operation. And that the two errors are back again associated with the LSP towards router number two. Well, if we have a look at the log, We can see the VPM alarms. In this case, the alarms indicate that a loop has been detected between node number eight and node number six for the LSP towards router number two. So back to the slides. And to summarize, Segment routing DPM provides an effective solution for LSP data plane monitoring and black hole de detection. It is local. It runs per node function that relies on existing MPLS OAM operations using 
segment routing to enforce the path of its test traffic. Based on a localized detection process, DPM is therefore highly scalable. Lastly, network operators can rely on DPM for both proactive and reactive LSP monitoring. Always stay up to date with the latest segment routing development by visiting www.segmentrouting.net or follow us in social media. Hope you found the demonstration useful. Thank you.